to our own theme song i know i know do you can you see me in the control center as we're doing that yes can you see me yes i can i love it it's kind of like we can't hear each other yet so sorry for starting out with the inside joke folks but happy to see everybody hello tori hello what an exciting way to start a thursday yes i love waking up in the morning to a text from you with really good news i happen to also be on social media at the same time and we just saw this great release of Vanity Fair's full coverage from their time at the Wicked set. Photographer Sophie Holland and Universal Pictures did those on set. I'm hoping this is part of what's going to be this like glorious making of behind the scenes book, coffee table book that we can all collect and and commit to memory. I would I would buy that in a clock tick, my friend. <laughs> As the saying goes, yes. Very good. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's gorgeous. I mean, why don't I, I, I reached out to you right away. Oh, we're already getting some comments, some friends checking in. Hello, Ooh. Arizona. Arizona. Oh, you people in Arizona. That's nice. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and yeah, why don't we just dive right into it? Let's do it. All right. So I, the one thing I noticed about these photos, there is so much hidden detail. So I'm so excited to break this down with you. Yes. That's what I started to think as I was like, oh gosh, there's so much to dissect here. And there's so many different things that are going on in the details that I was like, we just need to talk through everything. You so, really do. Mm -hmm. I already updated my, um, my Facebook cover photo to this. I love it so much. I like, couldn't wait. Um, <clears throat> but it's just cool to see them all together. And I mean, and first, we finally have a proper photo of Marissa Bodie as Nessa Rose and Ethan Slater as Bach. Up until now, we've had mostly back backstage photos of them, leaks of them, but this is a really beautiful high resolution shot. It is. And I love, I mean, first of all, let's just talk about, you know, before we get into, um, cause in the other photos, photos, we're going to look at some props and see how they really, uh, speak to what might be going on in this land of Oz, but look at the costumes here. I mean, so this is a new dress for Michelle Yeoh that we haven't seen before in any of the previews or behind the scenes photos. And I absolutely love it. This is Madame Morrible's early years at Shiz before she gets the grandiosity of the Emerald City in her veins. Mm -hmm. We have, can we just have a moment for Jeff Goldblum's shoes? Hello? Okay, we're, we're, we're not on that floor yet. Let's wait till we get there. Let's wait till we get there. But yes, I know. I'm, what I was thinking about here is um, Marissa Bodie's shoes, like those shoes. She Perfect. is fabulous. She looks perfect. Everybody here is styled exactly right. I yeah. mean, and, and this is, of course, a composite shot. We've seen this shot of Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande before. Mm -hmm. And now we have this wide shot with everybody included. And it's just lovely. And what I love is that, you know, we're finally getting a little bit of detail with uh, Jonathan Bailey as Fierro. And this is different than the, the shot we're about to see with him and the horse. But what I love is here you see the detailing in his pants and his shoes and just his pose in this photo reeks fiero it is just all of that you know all of that uh attitude and um he's just polite. scandalous yes polite narcissism i absolutely love it so all right let's dig in here look at this so this is obviously Elphaba, just as she's about to take flight in Defying Gravity. You can see the broken glass of the Emerald City window behind her. And the thing that made me the most excited was that in the window is the wizard's balloon. Yep. So obviously that is going to be play a role in the Defying Gravity scene. And this is not something we really get to see in the musical beyond the 
kind of hint towards it in Wizomania. So I'm really right. excited. Or at the end of uh, the show, when Glinda says to the wizard, better go get your balloon ready. Go get you know, your so, balloon ready. Yeah. So we know that it's um, it's still a part of this story. And yeah, to see it and to see how it might actually be seen in the film is very exciting. But also just the detailing work here. Um, again, the circular windows, which is, I feel like circles are, are playing a bigger part here. Maybe it has to do with like the wheels and the cogs of a clock. So it's a nod to that. We've got the bubbles also. There's a lot of like circle detailing in the design here between the set design and costuming that we're gonna see. You're right. And you know, we haven't heard yet anything about the time dragon or whether the clock will play a role. But if that is the framing device, then this whole thing will come together. Yeah, I'd be like really surprised if they eliminated it altogether. I mean, it it's not part of the story. Uh, really, in the stage show, I mean, Glinda does reference it according to the Time Dragon Clock, and we obviously it's, it's part of the set and it moves ferociously at, at, during um, when the when the what is it when the wing monkeys are transformed. Pretty much any time there's a major plot twist, anytime something happens that changes the fate of Oz altogether, mm -hmm. then the clock of the time dragon responds. But the entire thing is set in the device of the clock because Glinda's bubble is a pendulum. So when it comes down and no one mourns the wicked, it mm -hmm. is signifying that this whole thing is set within the time dragon clock. Yeah, it's brilliant. So I wonder, it'll be very interesting to see how they play with that, if at all, in the film films. So here we got Glinda and a lot more of uh, this background. This looks like Munchkinland, right? This definitely looks like Munchkinland. We see the tulips here in those fields that we know are planted. Um, Nine million and, tulips. <laughs> yes, where we've seen that that is set. Um, what I find really interesting about this shot is, first of all, we get a really close look at Glinda's bubble machine, which is very, very cool and has circles on the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. tap, tap to bubble. To um, bubble. <laughs> and there's also a stacks of yellow bricks as if either the yellow brick road has been disturbed or recently built. Mm -hmm. But it's indicating that there's some sort of disruption. Yeah. I do love, what's really interesting about this bubble design is that it's, you can see that there's like a step down where can, she can kind of step up into it. So it maybe is always levitating a bit. Uh, and it's like a big chair or a throne and it looks like it's pink satin and all of this, you know, this gold fix, these gold fixtures um, on the, in the design. And it's so exquisite. I mean, I would just love a chair like that yes. in my living room, right? Hey, Pottery Barn, let's, let's have a, a <laughs> wicked furniture tie-in. Exactly. Yeah, it's really exquisite. And one thing, you know, we've talked about the, the change, the iconic change of uh, from blue on stage in the musical Wicked to we're seeing her pink here for for good and no one mourns the Wicked. But also the wand has also changed the design of her wand it has this bright pink light kind of fluffy cotton candy esque top to the the, the top part. I understand why they departed from the pink for the musical, mm -hmm. but since we're leaning, it, it really does feel like we're leaning into the Glinda pink motif, um, as we'll see in another photo. It really looks like we're leaning into that Billy Burke-esque pink and the fact that pink goes good with green. And I, I'm all for it, actually. I'm, yes. I, and I remember at the time that Wicked came out on stage, people were criticizing the blue dress for changing from blue to pink. And now we're having that reverse thing happen. But I'm actually right. glad they went this way. Well, and when Wicked did its out-of-town tryout, the musical in San Francisco, even her popular dress was not pink. So she had no pink at one point. They were really trying to stay away. Just a minute. Toto, Toto wants to say hello. She's like bumping up on the desk. Toto! Say, hello. Hi, Toto! Um, but yeah, they were so um, they were really staying away. I think it was Susan Hilferty was really res resisting the pink, but then obviously bringing in that great line, pink goes good with green during popular, making that dress pink has brought back in the iconic look that we expect and love of Glinda. And also it makes more sense that Glinda's in pink if we go back even to L. Frank Baum, because um, as the original Witch of the South and yeah. Quadling, um, she's into, which is all very red, pink is a shade of red. So that would, you know, would almost make more sense if the Glinda the Witch of the North would be purple, right? From, from yeah. Gillikin country. For sure. A little bit of a, of a book dive there. Um, Okay, I can't. 
So here we go. This this is remember um, first look. I'm like who we're like that's someone on a horse. I thought it was someone flying, and it's someone on a horse. Now I think we know who's on the horse. It is that winky prince who's so scandalous. It's Fiero, and he is riding a horse of a different color. He really is. I love that there's that uh, chain with his initial F around the horse's neck. Um, it's very cool that that we have this cool horse, and and I love actually Jonathan's sun-kissed highlights the little bit of blonde in his hair it looks really fantastic it's a really great design choice but i just couldn't love the guy more i'm excited for bridgerton season three coming up in a couple weeks as well and i know he's in a few episodes of that so he's been working very very hard these last couple of years this poor man was all over the globe filming these multiple projects at the same time i also find it really interesting he's standing in front of tapestries that look mm -hmm. like kiamo Co., which i find very, very interesting. I don't know if these are tapestries that hang in the castle in the West or are somehow adjacent, or if this was just a style choice that Sophie Holland made, but it's very interesting. It is, it is really cool. And you're right, it does look kind of Kiyamoko-esque. And then let's see, next, here we go. Now this has to be either Dr. Dilliman's classroom or somewhere else at Shiz. We see a bunch of the students together. This looks, um, you know, reminiscent of like all those envelopes from the owls flying around, you know, who see the papers. And and why don't you tell us a little bit about the detailing we see here on some of the papers? I see one on the left is the choir auditions coming up. Choir auditions. So go ahead and sign up, everybody, for the Shiz Choir. But then there's also this, and I'm trying to get the close up so I can remember the exact verbiage. It's Twisted Tornado Tournament there. And right. so, uh, I, and we see a little bit of the students making things kind of turn around in a twister in the classroom in the trailer. So I'm wondering if this is sorcery class and they're practicing making their own twisters, which of course ties into something that Madame Morrible says in act two. Right. Now, but then on the blackboard, there is a drawing of grain on the blackboard, which would tie into Dr. Dilliman's lesson about the great drought and how people grew hungrier and angrier and talking about those themes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to see in this shot and all the stacks of books. And especially there's one particular stack that we'll see in a later photo. They look very much like the bindings of Baum's books. Very, very mm -hmm. similar to the way the OZ is drawn. And I love yeah, that. It's true. It's true. And even the map, we got this shiz map again in a circle um on the right side there that uh shen shen standing in front of and then also to the contraption on the left we see lots of little circles and silver there so we're going to see also and all the you can see in the wheel the arms and the wheel of nesero's wheelchair lots of circular work again we're just seeing that as a real theme um and i wonder how that's going to play in the story too i love fanny's velvet jacket Yes. That's amazing. And then also, like, I love box hair. I love, you know, this is, so, you know, interestingly here, they kept the color tone from the stage show in terms of like blue, silver, white, and a little bit of the asymmetrical design. So that's one of the things that's so spectacular about Wicked on stage, whether it's the Oz Dust Ballroom and all the black and white, but that they are, they play with um, gender norms from, our earth right and also uh symmetry and design and structure and i love that there's at least a hint of that here because that's part of what makes shiz university so unique and by the way everything we're seeing of shiz i feel like um you know not to me not to be blasphemous but it's just putting hogwarts to shame so i, I i'm hoping for real theme park energy here I agree. And I love the map, especially because in the article that Vanity Fair wrote to attach to these photos, John Shu was quoted as saying that one of his main inspirations for these sets was Hook, which is a, a film that yeah. we all grew up with and had these spectacular, sumptuous sets. Mm -hmm. And the Shiz set, that was the first thing that came to mind for me with the way that they have the barges and the real water. So you can really see that illustrated very clearly here. Yeah, it's exquisite. And Matt's asking, who's the photographer here? It's not Annie Leibovitz. It is Sophie Holland, and we have her name and Universal Pictures, who co-own these photos on all of the slides. Um, next up, we've got uh, Jeff Goldblum as the wizard and Michelle Yeoh as Madame Morrible, ever growing closer in cahoots together. We know what's going on, but great, great. I mean, this portrait is, I, I just want this framed immediately. 
They look stunning. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't get much of a glimpse of Jeff Goldblum before the trailer hit. So it's really nice to see him in his full wizard regalia. He looks great. He looks very much the part. And Michelle Yeoh looks very comfortable getting cozy with the wizard here. Exactly. And I also love, let me just reiterate, I just love the wizard is in proper emerald because so often we just see him in black in other film adaptations and in animated adaptations. And I just love seeing him in proper green. And we see him in green in the current uh, revival of The Wiz coming back to Broadway in a couple weeks and opening on Broadway in a couple weeks. It's there now, but um, it just is so, so I just love it. I'm all for The Wizard in Emerald. Even in the stage play in Wicked the Musical, he's wearing a gray overcoat over a vest. He doesn't get a proper emerald moment. So you're right. This was a really yes. good choice. Yes. And as we are going to see coming up here, he's got a great green top hat as well. So here, this is Michelle Yeoh as Madame Morrible. And it looks like she is either in her uh, room or her private office or her study or some other private room, right? This might be where the private lessons take place. Yes, I'm noticing the contraption on the right hand side and we see Elphaba using that to make things levitate in the trailer. And again, on her dress, that same wheel and spoke design, that same sort of circular theming that you mentioned right. before. Yeah, so I'm wondering, it's got to, I wonder if, if maybe they did eliminate the time dragon clock altogether, but in the design of set and costumes, they just kept some of that kind of those um, wheels and cogs and things. You know, it's, yeah, maybe it's I, evoking it. But also on her book, on the back uh, cover of the book, you can see a very tiny balloon illustrated there. Oh, yes, you can. That's so cool. And again, and the flowers. And I love this also all the, the blue and white. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's it's giving a little bit of China country um, from Oz the Great and Powerful. Some of that white and blue. I mean, just, just a very, I mean, I'm far reaching to even say that. I'm sure that's not the inspiration here at all, but like, you well, know. Munchkin, I, munchkin blue as well. Yes, munchkin blue. And it's just, yeah, just exquisite. I mean, that's like, I mean, it's not the way you can tell that I design, but like, if I could live in a place like that, it's really, really cool looking. Um, okay, here, let's, let's talk about this hat now. <gasps> Oh, okay. So the wizards, this is my favorite photo yeah. because there is so, there are so many hidden messages here. Mm -hmm. First of all, that top hat is gorgeous. Yes. Second, those boots. I oh. need those shoes. Hey, Nike. Let's yes. have a wicked. I'm thinking more like Stacey Adams. Adams. <laughs> but also he is propping his foot up on a basket full of yellow bricks, mm -hmm. which indicates to me that they're going to rope the bomb book in by including the fact that the wizard commissioned the building of the yellow brick road in the first place. Mm -hmm. He also has a couple of pairs of mechanical eyes sitting on his desk and sandwiched between those is a piece of paper which has the blueprints for the wizard's mechanical head on it. Mm -hmm. So you see, and also, and, and behind him, again, in the design, the swirls and the circles, and it looks like it's the mechanics, but um, it's like clockwork, right? So there is that theme coming in again. and. Just so many different, like it look, a lot of it looks like it could be wind machine type things. And um, although Morrible has a specialty of the weather, is there? Oh, you do you see the little train on the track going around his desk at the bottom there? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! That's Wait. Train. Yes, I do love the eyes. Then there are different sets. You wonder if it's like he swaps out eyes for for different moods or things. <laughs> He is the master of Oz and he is indicating in this one shot how much in control he really is of it all. He is the yes. puppet master. And Paul Taswell, just chef's kiss, those pants, like in any color, I would wear them. They are so cool and green. I mean, he did the costumes for The Wiz Live as well and his Emerald City design and all of that was exquisite. But I mean, clearly he did not get his fill of Oz on that and came back for so much more. And everything is so inspired and gorgeous here and actually quite wearable. I mean, listen, Tori, you and I who live in Oz gear, I mean, I think there are lots of these pieces that we could find ways to make work in the real world. <laughs> well, I mean, you know me, I can rock an Oz thing daily. So yes, yes I would definitely wear. And, and John Shu said that when he was first interviewed, he said, you're going to want to wear the clothes. You're going to want to immerse yourself in the world. And he's not wrong. <laughs> Yes, it's so true. I know. I want to know the names. You know, what's in the punch? Lemons and melons and pears. I want. We want to know exactly what everything's going to look like and taste like. Okay, 
here we go. I mean, yes, talking about investing in the pink. I mean, she, it's like it's like pink is her signature color. It's all she wears. And all the pink accessories. I mean, she is the girl's girl here. She is Elle Woods here. She is every bit of everything that is just cotton candy and fluff. And, you know, it's, you can tell she's obviously somebody who uses pink as escapism, as a way to avoid any darkness or reality and kind of wants to create this environment that everything is just perfect. And again, it does fit where she geographically comes from in Oz. I love the little G for Galinda on all of her luggage. Mm -hmm. I love, and I love the juxtaposition of Glinda's side here versus Elphaba's. On Elphaba's side, she's got her foot propped up on a stack of books, again, that look very bomb-esque in design. And then on her bed, she has themes of poppies all over her side. She's got them in a vase on her little tray there. She also has a very small hourglass. Hourglass, yeah. I know, I know, there's, I know, I saw that right away and the poppies as well. And it's like, yeah, because I mean, I guess poppies do play into the storyline here. You know, even though we don't see them in the, on the stage production, we know that Dorothy and friends go through that at some point to, to get there. So it's cool that she's experimenting with uh, flower magic, you know, and, and, kind of mind control there or something, but I just, it's just incredible here. And it says so much about their personalities. Yes. And they hinted in the trailer a little bit that there was some sort of flower magic going on uh, during sorcery seminar. She does do something with some flowers. They kind of hint that that's how she makes everyone go to sleep to help the uh, escape of a certain creature. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to give too much away, but it, it seems here that she's uh Again, we're leaning into that uh, that magic aspect, and uh, there's a juxtaposition even of lighting. She, her side of the room is darker. Yes, the light is coming in at a different angle. It's just all of Sophie Holland's work here is just there's so much being communicated, and it's very simply done, but it's mm -hmm. really, really well done. It says so much. Yeah, there's great storytelling in all of these photos, and again, we see um, on the right there. Uh, another map and we see it looks like either a zebra or a horse's head or something and uh, i'm straining so hard to read the titles of those books that elfie's holding but for the life of me i cannot but i'm thinking it's going to be so much fun you know maybe at some point somebody will write or gregory M gregory mcguire might feel inclined to release some some books or some more about the sporting or some chapters about things other things that go on at shiz university you know so I'm looking at this map more closely and I'm seeing that it's it's a map of Oz. I see Kiamo Ko on the bottom there and there's a giraffe head and all of the yeah. notations have to do with animals. So it's talking about animal lineage and uh, the history of Oz in this map here on the wall, which is really, really great. I'm so glad. I mean, they're leaning into the animal subplot and the Dr. Dilliman subplot, even though conspicuously, again, left out of all of this. Dr. Dillman. Where is he? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I wonder, well, there's got to be something to this. It's going to be a big reveal for some reason. Yeah, I see. As you said that now, and I zoom in a little bit closer, I see the word chicken on the upper left. I see the word perhaps with an uh, arrow. Up. Chicken? Yes. And I thought it was a zebra, but you're right. That's um, a giraffe. Is that above Kiamoko? Yes. Cool. Very cool. All right, let's look at the next photo here. This is so fun. Oh, was that it? I want more. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Wicked is coming out at Thanksgiving. That's exciting. Um, gosh, Tori, what do you think? Well, I think that this is very well-timed considering that after the Oscars, Cynthia Revo said we'd see more sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. And they weren't referencing footage there, but and now I'm wondering, is this indicative that another trailer is coming soon? I mean, this drop was huge. The article is so worth the read. If you guys are just looking at the photos, definitely go to the Van Vanity Fair website as well and read the article. It's very well done. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, are we going to get this in print? Is this just an online exclusive? I would love to own a physical copy of I know, this. I know. I will be there. framing. And you know what they'll probably do is print some of these photos back to back. So you have to buy multiple <laughs> magazines if you want all of them. Um, yeah, Chris Murphy wrote the article here and he did a Zoom interview. He cut to speak with Cynthia and Ari together on Zoom and chat with them and, and John Shu. And there's, there are some great, great quotes. Um, have any trouble 
today. Um, let's see, they're going to be Michelle Yeoh does look fantastic. Just looking at some of the co comments here. It's so great. Thank you guys for watching. Um, is there, oh, we, yeah, I see you looking over. So um, just wanted to have somebody come in and say hello. Who's it? Hi, hello there. Hey. Somebody Sutton, it's follow the yellow brick girl. Surprise. How are you? <laughs> good, how are you? Really good, thanks. It's so great to see you. I know, good to see you too. So hey. how, what are you guys doing together in New York? Hanging out. Just Hanging out. Okay? Well, we, we will have uh, some stuff coming, announcements coming soon. Stay tuned. Yes. Well, I, I hope you do some, so you co-create some content, you know, at least, at least link arms and skip down, you know, around Times Square. There we go. <laughs> There's our content exclusive right here on Oz Talk. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oz crossover episode. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, let's um let us know. I mean, I know you've seen the photos. Uh, Tori and I just dissected them as best we could. What's your first takeaway? They're stunning, and all I thought of this morning when I woke up was, I have to have this magazine. Yes, <laughs> immediately. I know Absolutely. you are so good at um even if like they don't release officially replica, you know, costuming, you are so good at recreating looks awesome. from animation, live action, whatever. You're so good at that. And I know you're part of a group that, that does that for Disney, mm -hmm. the Disney bounding, right? Yes. So it's actually we, like our big month this month. Is it? Okay. Yeah. And, and you've done so many Oz from the Wiz to Dorothy to, you know, all, all different characters and things. What, what in these costumes that you've seen so far speaks to you that you are just salivating to kind of experiment with yourself? Glenda's. Yeah. Dress. <laughs> the so Prashina dress, as now it's been lovingly called. I mm -hmm. like, okay, I manifest things and I'm manifesting. I'm going to, I'm manifesting going to that premiere. And I've already mm -hmm. been trying to figure out like my version of Glinda's like maybe popular dress, not necessarily like in the film, cause I don't know what that looks like, but like the stage version, yeah. like is there a red carpet version of that, that I could maybe rock? I always want to be like Elphaba, like all the time. Yeah. Cause I just obviously resonate with her a lot as well. You know, the whole racism thing is kind of, of like just something that I've always flocked to. I definitely see myself in both those witches though. It's funny because most people that I'm friends with resonate with like usually one stronger than the other. And I'm like, I feel like it's a 50-50 thing, but Elphaba wears black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's such true. a color person. I love to dress in color. So I think if I were to grace any red carpet of any type of thing, I think I would have to go with like bright color something. So yes. like Linda. That makes yeah. sense. I want to figure out some kind of like casual way to bring that dress to life also. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. the ideas well, are you will find a way. I have no doubt of it. I mean, and I, and I've been, you know, I've, I've been telling everyone that I've been just kind of going my, this is for the next two years. I'm pink goes good. Oh, with gold. These are for, beautiful Swarovski bracelets with gold, but I've been, I showed Tori some other stuff. I've been getting a lot of Swarovski because they've been you doing a lot of Actually, need to send me the link to that because I need to wear that to my. Yes, friends. I know. I don't normally. I'm not normally like this, like God and sparkly. But I was like, hey, I love a little sparkle, and I love. So I mean, like for two years, I was like, everyone get ready. I'm gonna wear nothing but pink and green together. Yeah. Well, so, I'm an AKA. I don't yeah. know if you can do that, and that's literally our sorority colors are pink and green. I love so that. I have so much pink and green stuff anyway, but I'm just like, this is just perfect meshing, melding. I of World. Yes, I whenever I see people with those colors in the sorority, I'm always like, ah, oh, oh, that would be so fun. I want to join just to wear the gear. <laughs> um, Why not? One of us. Yeah. So Tori, how about you? Which which look is your favorite so far? Which is which? Which which? So it's really hard to pick just one, but if I had to pick just one look I, from this new set of photos, I. Glinda's travel look is just so well tailored. She looks so Ariana Grande looks stunning in it. It's and just, what's interesting about that actually is there is some purple in it, which harkens to the Gillikin purple. For sure. And it's very, it's it's just so Galinda. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's so and we've seen a lot of the pink dress. It is stunning. Yeah. It looks gorgeous in it. Um, but this one is one that I think is really, really well made, well tailored, and looks great on her. Mm -hmm. I love that look. Yeah, and I just want everything wizard right now. 
all of those pants, those shoes, that hat, all of it, everything. So, so cool. Um, well, this was really fun. I know that people are starting to get some of the Funko items are showing up. There's the, the Chance of Chase of the Dorothy or Dorothy versus Toto Blockbuster. There's also some of the new Funko Pops that people, have you guys received anything yet? Yep, I've actually, I've got six of the full-sized Funko, uh, Funko Pops so far, and I got my Dorothy without Toto. Uh, my Dorothy with Toto is on its way. Um, you found one, or did you? I, found, I didn't find it organically. I cheated. I bought one. Who wants to find okay. that organically? I need to buy one, too. I was, I have, Funko graciously gifted me the entire Funko Pop collection. Yes, I'm, now I'm remembering your unboxing. You got those early. I was screaming. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was just like, ah! My, they were no, that was great. Unboxing. Um, but the Blockbuster one, I want, I have the regular one, but I really need the Chase. And I'm like, I might go the toy route and just like find someone who's selling the Chase because I don't want to look. I, I haven't seen anyone yet find it organically. A lot of people are, are buying like six or seven of them and they're all the one without. got to save my funds for the other Wicked merch coming. Out. So I like, know. I that's need to so just do what you did. It's, it's cheaper. Yeah, it's so true in the long run. And there's also a couple new Ray Dunn things. It looks like another mug and another jar. Um, I bought two of the blockbusters, and neither was the Chase. And you know, I'm such a Toto person, obviously. Uh -huh. but that was like a little bum. I did buy. Um, I didn't buy the, the the Funko Deluxe set for the Funko Pops. And so I just bought one of each character, and totally randomly, the lion that I received, the one lion I received, was a Chase. <gasps> Good for you. That's incredible. But what the funniest thing was, I was like, oh, I kind of want the regular one, which is so dumb. Like, it's like, no, I'm just going to keep the Chase one and that's going to be my line because I'm not going to. Um, you could just get the regular one just on the, the shelf one. for like that's 12 bucks. Go to like Hot Topic or any place and just be like, oh, because that's the easy one to find. That's knowing true. How, knowing how scarce the original ones are, I wouldn't sit on these. No. Get them while they're out yes. and available. It's true. I mean, the price, I feel like that's those, of, as far as Oz March goes, I feel like the original Oz Funko Pops, those increased in value faster than I think any other item that came the out. The Muppets were the other ones that were like that. They were vaulted so quickly. The Muppet Wizard of Oz items? No, no, just the Muppet Funko Pops. They had a oh. line of just a plain Muppets. Those were vaulted as quickly as the Wizard of Oz ones. And those are two of the most hardest things to get. Um, they just vaulted them so quick. Do you have them? You don't, because uh, you're a huge Muppets fan as well. I know. I have newer Muppets Funkos because okay. I learned my lesson from the last one. I thought I had time. Mm -hmm. They bolted them so fast. Are the newer ones as as pricey too? Not right now. Um, I know. have like, they just came out with a Kermit and Constantine set and I got that. <gasps> yeah, I love Constantine so much that I was like mine. And then there's also like a Jim Henson one that has Jim Henson with Kermit and Jim Henson with Ernie. I have the mm -hmm. Kermit one. The Ernie one was pretty quick to be vaulted. So that one was harder to find. And, and I saw a lot of these bundle sets sell out really fast. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people starting to complain because some of the shop owners from these smaller shops are being really rude when people ask like, hey, I'm starting to see people get their Funko Pops. Why why don't I have them? And um, so just keep tabs on your um, scheduled delivery dates on your tracking numbers and uh, your Funkos will come. Also check Hot Topic and any stores that sell Funko Pops. They're starting to show up. My friend's actually in New York right now and he was just at a comic book shop and they're all on the shelves, chase and regular, just like sitting on the shelves. Wow. Okay. That is a good, good tip. Uh -huh. Now, as far as Wicked merch goes, we know that Mattel is going to do a line of dolls. We've seen that there may be some Lego. Do we know if Funko has jumped on that train for Wicked? I don't know if I'm supposed to say, but yes. Oh. You Wicked Funko? <laughs> yeah. They just did. That's no, so, so they, they did. This was leaked online um, like a month ago. I don't Somebody, even know. A Funko insider did say on Instagram that they were coming. Yeah, I just right. knew, but I didn't know. I didn't know. Somebody else leaked it. It wasn't me. It wasn't. It was not. <laughs> Great. It wasn't not, me. Right. Yes. Well, I hope that they do like a really cool... Um, Obviously, they could do like multiples of uh, Alphaba and Glinda. They could do a Galinda and a Glinda, you know, different Alphabas. And they also also the chance to do multi, you know, more for the next movie because we have no idea. Like Alphaba, you know, the Act Two dress on stage is so magnificent. I'm wondering what the look of Alphaba in Part Two is going to be if it changes much, or is she just going to kind of be like classic Wicked Witch? And she once we see her fly out of the Emerald City and Defying Gravity, is that her look for the rest of the second film? Nothing Paul Taswell has done thus far is cookie cutter. So I'm true. preparing for excellence. True, true. Yeah, that would be, I mean, that would be really cool, though, if it's like this ornate kind of 
again, lacy sort of. Oh. Well, it's supposed to be her dress, but in tatters. And, you know, she's yeah. been mending it, maybe even with magic. Maybe it's glittery because she's using her magic to mend it as she travels. Um, so, call. yeah, I would I would uh, prepare for fantastic. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so good. That'll be a dress I want, for sure. Very cool, very cool. Well, awesome, guys. This was so much fun. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, et cetera. Um, and uh, stay tuned for our next Oz Talk coming up whenever there are future drops and exciting things. And Tiffany, it's so great to see you. We have to do this. Can you one. believe I'm in the Oz room? I love it. I'll be right over. <laughs> Come on. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And we'll catch up more soon. Love ya. Bye. Bye.